Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. I'm so excited for today's guest because we have her parents on every month, and I've been wanting to have her on for some time, but she finally was able to make the time. She's not only going to tell us about what she does for McDougal program, where she's the CEO, and how she raised three plant-based thriving children. They're pretty much almost all grown up now. She is going to show us some of her favorite plant-based one-pot meals and kind of how she approaches meal planning. Please welcome the CEO of drmcdougal.com and the daughter of Dr. John and Mary McDougal, Heather McDougal, and my birthday twin. I, I'll never forget your birthday. <laughs> no, I love it. Hi, AJ. Thank you so much for having me on. This is great. Oh. I am so excited. I'm so, I mean, what are the chances that you have my birthday and your brother has my husband's birthday? I know Doug Lyle will say, oh, you know, but it, like he doesn't believe in stuff like that. But I mean, that's pretty interesting that we share those birthdays, I think. I love it. Yeah. So today I thought it would be great to just talk about how I'm so successful on the McDougal program. And one of the main things is just keeping it simple. And I'm, you know, there's times that I do spend more more time in the kitchen and take more steps, planning my meals and prepping my meals. But for the most part, I really like to keep it simple. So I thought today it would be fun to just do one of my simple one pot meals. I'm all about one pot meals for a number of reasons. One, there's only one pot that I have to wash. Two, everything can go in the pot. So potatoes, beans, veggies, all in one place. So it's really, really easy for me to prep. And then I just find it easier to get my kids to eat one pot meals because everything's there. So today I thought I would do kind of my, my fallback when I have nothing planned for dinner. I haven't gone shopping, but I know I have these items in my pantry. And um, so I call it my kitchen sink soup. And that's because I just kind of put a little bit of everything into it. And it's really adaptable. So if you don't have um, the cannellini bean, which I'm gonna use today, you can use other kind of beans. You can use different greens. You could add carrots, um, you know, really anything that you've got in your pantry. But I like to make this um, in big pots because I'm all about batch cooking as well. And that way I have food for leftovers the next day. And if I have a lot extra, then I can put some in the freezer. So. Um, that's just really kind of the basics of my cooking. There are days when I spend a lot more time in the cook kitchen, but I like to have these, these fallback items. Yeah. You know, batch cooking, I think is such a great idea, Heather, even if people don't eat the way we do, because it just saves so much time. And I think money too. When I think about growing up, my mom made dinner every night, but then when my dad got sick and she had to go to work, guess what? Now it was fast food. And there, it seemed like Nobody figured out batch cooking back then, you know, it was like either, well, I mix from scratch every night or we go through the drive through when batch cooking is the best. It's like the best solution, I think. Absolutely. And I tell people, even if they live alone, batch cook, you know, I make a big pot of rice, make a big pot of beans, make a big soup, because that way you have, you know, if you're hungry later or if you don't feel like cooking the next day, you've got food. I mean, you just are so much more successful when you have food prepared in your kitchen, uh, in your refrigerator, in your freezer, because that way you don't end up having fast food. You know, you don't end up making those calls. You've got something prepared, something really healthy and filling that didn't take a whole lot of time. Yep. So giant pots are my friend. I have all kinds of these in all different sizes and you know, again, I tell people, even if they live alone, use a big pot because you don't want to go through all the effort just to make a small amount. You're going to go through the same amount of effort if you make, you know, eight, 10 or 12 quarts. So this way you can have food for leftovers the next day and also put some in your freezer. You know, this way I have, you know, four or five soups in my freezer so that when I really don't cook, I can... Um, take one out and have a uh, one pot meal really easy in just a few minutes. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Do you ever use your instant pot for one pot meals? Oh, all the time. That's, you know, I was thinking about my favorite kitchen item and I think it's probably the instant pot. I use that every day, but not everyone has an instant pot and I don't want people to feel like they have to go out and buy 
a lot of items to start eating this way. And so really, I just tell people to get a big pot, you know, just get one of these. And you, there's so many things that you can do in it. You know, you can make rice, you can make beans, you can make soups, you can boil potatoes, you know, the possibilities are endless. So um, I really recommend a good quality stainless steel pot. Yep. Where did you get yours? Oh gosh, probably Amazon. This is just Cuisinart. You know, there's so many different brands. There's all clad, um, but Cuisinart is a really good, good brand. It's not very expensive. You can get it at Bed Bath & Beyond or Amazon, your local cookware store. So nice. Yeah. So I, I mean, really, this is the most simple meal. So not a lot of chopping, cooking, um, today we're really going to keep it basic and I've got, um, some of my favorite vegetable broths here. I'm only going to use one, uh, container, but these two brands here are great. they are no salt added, wow. um, bonafide here is a new one. Um, but I found it in my local grocery store. I, uh, I haven't seen, I have seen the kitchen basics, but that's fantastic that they're coming out with more brands like that. Yes. I love it. And nothing in it other than, I mean, there's like, 12 ingredients in here, 12 vegetables uh, and water, and that's it. So I always have these in my pantry. I always keep my pantry stocked <clears throat> with vegetable broth, canned beans, uh, different grains. So that way I can whip up a soup, you know, or uh, burrito bowls in, in just a short amount of time. So um, vegetable broth is, is really helpful. I also make vegetable broth from scratch in my Instant Pot. But that takes some time and not everyone has that kind of time. So these are really great to have in your pantry because you just pop open the top, add it to your pan, your pot, and that's how you can really get things started. If you don't want to use broth, you can absolutely use water. That works just as well. Uh, but I like the added flavor of the broths. And then I have uh, no salt added beans. I like the Eden brand. They're organic. I usually buy them on sale. When I see them on sale, I get a whole bunch of them. You could also buy these in bulk at Vitacost or on Amazon. You know, it really depends on how you like to shop. So I just use two cans of these. I rinse them and drain them already just because I don't like the, the bean juice. But if you want to leave that in, you can absolutely do that. So I just add these to my pot. And my pantry's full of these. I have black beans, pinto beans, cannellini beans, navy beans. I, I just love them. Do you ever save the liquid though? You know, that aquafaba that people often use to make other recipes. You know, I don't. And I need to because everybody talks about it, making you know, meringues and like, you know, whips. I've never, I've never used it. So have you? I haven't yet, but I, I hear great things about it. People like make make like you say that it whips up whipped cream. It's, I wonder who even invented that or how they would even think about that. I know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't use the bean juice. I'm not a big baker. I'm. There's a couple muffin recipes I use, but I'm not a huge baker. Um, I'm not really a big good. dessert person either. Until you turned me on to the Ninja Creamy, oh. <laughs> and now I love sorbet. <laughs> I know that that is a pretty great machine. I got to tell you. So this next item is something that I also have my pantry full of, and that's the Muir Glen, the fire roasted tomatoes. I love those. Um, I also have pomi tomatoes in my pantry. I love um, or different other different no salt tomatoes that are great to make a marinara sauce. Um, but I have my pantry stocked with these. So I just add this. Very easy. So you could do uh, chopped, fresh chopped onion, fresh chopped garlic, um, but I'm just gonna do powdered. So I'll add that. And that's really it. And I'm just gonna stir it, put it on the stove. It's gonna come to a, a simmer. And then um, I'm gonna add some brown rice elbow macaroni that I got from um, Tinkyada gluten-free, whole grain, brown rice. It's great. It comes in all different shapes and sizes. So I really like this brand. So I'll add that after this comes to a simmer. So that's it. I mean, really so easy. And 
I made a big enough batch so my husband and I can have, um, we'll have lunch today since it's so early. Uh, and then I'll put some in the refrigerator so that we can have some for lunch or snack um, later. Um, and then I'll just add a different green. We'll either do kale or spinach or chard, whatever I have on hand. And then we'll do um, fresh lemon on top. Really, really easy. And then to either, to make it a little bit more hearty, this could either be like a preload before your main dish or just a one pot meal. And if that's the case, then I would serve it with a whole grain bread or roasted potatoes. Or over rice. Or over rice, absolutely. Yeah, that is great. Have you, did you uh, inherit your mother's innate uh, gift of being able to cook delicious recipes? Did she like, do you remember spending time with her in the kitchen growing up? That's all I did. I mean, <laughs> you know, she was writing cookbooks when I was little. So we were her guinea pigs. We had to try all the recipes. And so that meant, you know, I got to help her cook them. And so I learned, you know, everything I know in the kitchen from my mom. We've spent, you know, so many hours just preparing. That must have been fun. I can't imagine what it'd be like standing next to Mary and cooking. That would be amazing. Well, I didn't appreciate it when I was little, like I do now. But, you know, I'm just so thankful for what both of my parents taught me. You know, it's just. Well, that's because to you, they're, they're mom and dad. Like to us, they're Dr. McDougal and Mary, you know? Yeah. When I was younger, they were not cool at all. <laughs> um, and, you know, I didn't really want to listen to what they had to say. But now I'm just so thankful for what they taught me, what they instilled in my brothers and I that, you know, it's the time raising my boys the exact same way. I mean, the things that you know, I was angry at them for making me eat this way. You know, I, I do the same thing. So it's important to teach your kids about nutrition. I remember uh, uh, hearing them talk that, that you, you have two younger brothers and one, one who's a doctor and that they were they were the good kids that you actually had a little rebellious period with the food. Just a little. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad likes to joke that um, I rebelled with food and I did. I mean, I... I would stop at McDonald's at the bus stop and have cheeseburgers when I was in like, I don't know, probably fifth or sixth grade. And so, you know, experimenting tr and trying those types of foods, that was that was my way to, to rebel and do something that my parents didn't want me to do. Well, better than smoking. I mean, right? Well, yeah, I mean, not, not, did, did, you, did you enjoy those foods back then when you had them? And, and I mean, it's kind of good that you did experience them because now you can actually say those aren't good for you. I did. I really did. But now, I mean, the idea of them is just so repulsive to me. I just can't even imagine eating those. But like you said, I feel like I know I tried those foods. I'm not that person that was raised vegan and has never had meat or cheese or, you know, I've eaten those foods, I've experimented and I know how those foods make me feel and I don't want to eat them. So when, when did you like fully embrace, it's so funny because it's called the McDougal diet. Like you're that, you know, that's your name, Heather McDougal. So when did you fully embrace your own diet? <laughs> you know, probably not till college. In high school, I ate dairy products and I had a bad complexion and I was probably, I don't know, 15, 20 pounds overweight. And my dad kept telling me, give up the dairy, you'll lose the weight, your face will clear up. But what 16 year old girl wants to hear their dad say that? So it wasn't until college that I really just adopted the plant-based way of eating and you know understood it and embraced it and, um, you know, I've just kind of taken off from there. You know, I've been working with my parents since, oh my goodness, you know, since I was 20. Well, actually, I've been working for my parents since I was a little girl. I worked in their food factories when I was like 14. I worked in my dad's medical clinic when I was in high school. I've really been a part of their, their lives and their business for, you know, my whole life. Wow. Really following in the family footsteps. I love it. What do you do for the, I mean, I mean, you're the CEO. What does that mean? Because I know that now you, you have so many new ventures. Now you're, you're starting to host a weekly chat with your parents, ask them anything, AMA. I uh, started a couple of months ago, Sundays at five, people want to join and they, they can send in questions in advance. Sometimes there's a topic and you're kind of hosting that for them. So AJ, I wear so, I wear so many hats. I don't even know where to start, but I love them all. Um, you know, we've got our 12 day online course that really takes up 
the bulk of our time, but the Sunday night sessions have been really fun um, just because we get to connect with the general public, you know, people that we might never be able to talk with. Um, my dad and I have started doing half day seminars. We did one on aging, actually we did two on aging gracefully. That was tons of fun. Uh, we're doing a series called The Truth About Food that talks about protein and starches and fats and supplements. So we're keeping ourselves busy with that. Um, you know, and then there's just the mailings and social media, Instagram, you know, it's, it's a lot. Absolutely. Yeah, you, and uh, that series that you mentioned, The Truth About Food actually starts this Saturday, and I'm posting a link in the chat in the show notes, there's still time to register at a discounted rate. It's a four week series and each session is four hours. Do you want to talk a little bit about it? Sure. So we start at 10am Pacific. And, you know, it's just a session, it's divided into two sessions. And it's an in-depth lecture by my father, Dr. McDougall, followed by Q&A. And so everyone in the group has the opportunity to ask their questions, start a conversation, you know, based on the topics at hand. So really fun, a great way to connect, you know, to meet people that we might not otherwise get a chance to interact with. And then um, after that Q&A session, we have a break. And then we start into part two. And then that is also followed by a Q&A. So depending on how many questions they are, there are, you know, that kind of determines how long the event is. But usually it's about four hours and just a great opportunity for Dr. McDougall and myself to, you know, interact and answer questions on the various topics that we're covering. It sounds great. I registered for it and I can't wait. It starts this Saturday. And Sid, who's watching live, says that your, your skin looks wonderful. It's hard to believe you ever struggled with acne. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I didn't have, you know, the terrible, terrible acne, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm starting, I'm almost 49. And so I'm starting to joke with my family about my wrinkles. And for me, it's, you know, I spent decades in the sun. I grew up in Hawaii. And, you know, back then sunscreen wasn't um, top on my parents list. So, you know, I appreciate that. It's just really, it's a good diet, you know, eating well, taking care of your skin. And raising three boys, what was that like? Because they did, they, and did they rebel like their mom? Well, sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I raised them the exact same way my parents raised us and that, is educating, informing, you know, making this food at home and letting them make their choices outside of the house. I don't want to be a, a police woman, you know. I I know that they're going to, I mean, now I have one in college, so he's gone, and I have uh, one in high school and one almost in high school. So they, they're out, they're out doing things on their own. So for me, it's about educating and, you know, letting them know how um, the food that we make makes them feel. And so that hopefully when they're out in the real world, they'll make the right choices. And they usually do, you know, they know how those other foods make them feel. So for me, it's about just education, informing, and hoping they'll make the right choices when they're out there. Well, we had Halloween a few days ago. Maybe your kids were too old to like go trick or treating, but how, how did they navigate the holidays like that? So we kind of, just go all out for a couple of days. They go trick or treating, they eat the candy and then they're done. You know, they, they don't really like, and actually this year, I think my, each of my sons came home with like two, two things. They just weren't into it this year. They're, they're older. Um, but I just found that letting them eat it for a couple of days, they got sick of it. It made them feel bad. And then they didn't want any of it. And their school has a sort of a, donate option where you can donate your candy and they give it to the military or which I don't know if that's really a good option but yeah, that's, I know it's like you think it, you know it sounds so altruistic it's like but do we want to make these people sick too I know. <laughs> Oh gosh, I just think it's a crazy. I had four. This is my first year, you know, having a place where kids it was accessible. I had four trick or treaters. Well, I don't have to worry about buying candy because we live in an area where no kids come to the house. So that's not an option for me. But we were joking that I would give out you know, pencils or wait, I would I wouldn't do that, but <laughs> give up copies of the starch solution, right? Yeah. 
Or no, the McDougal picture book is better for children because it has more pictures. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it must be so cool having your whole family eat this way because so many people struggle, Heather, because their their families, sometimes it's their spouse, their kids. And, and like, if you guys get together for Thanksgiving, it's never a problem. It's not. And, you know, we're, we're pretty lucky. Um, we, you know, we do a very elaborate Thanksgiving meal. Um, you know, my mom is known for her stuffing and her mashed potatoes and her gravy. And I just feel like we have so many items that are so delicious. You don't really miss the turkey. You know, we still do pumpkin pie. We do my mom's wicked chocolate pie, um, roasted Brussels sprouts, green beans, the golden gravy. You know, we used to do a big stuffed pumpkin. So, you know, I don't really feel like we're missing out on anything. That would be so fun. You know, I, I I would love like a contest that we could enter and I'd even pay where you could win a seat at the McDougal Thanksgiving table. Huh? Well, I'm so excited this year. Um, I'm hosting Thanksgiving at my house and I haven't done that in five years because we lost our home in the fire and I just haven't had a, a home that was big enough to host everybody. So this year is the first year that I'm going to be hosting Thanksgiving in five years. So I'm just so excited to have the family Maybe you can live stream it for those of us that can't attend or yeah. <laughs> that would be so fun. It isn't true. I don't know if you're allowed to answer this, but, you know, Dr. McDougal says every other year I eat like a piece of turkey. I can't even remember the last time he ate turkey. I just think he doesn't want to have a label, you know, that he's vegan. He wants to keep people guessing, but, you know, it's just not his thing. He doesn't like it. And I'm thinking yeah. like, who cooks the turkey? I can't imagine Mary doing it. I mean, because then, then if all he's eating is a slice, who's going to eat the rest of it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Did you enjoy the McDougal adventure trips growing up? Oh my goodness. I love them. That was the way we got to see the world. You know, that was why one of the reasons why my parents started the business was so that we could travel um, and, and, you know, and not have to worry about the food. So, you know, we got to go all over Central and South America. That was kind of our, our place. So, you know, I spent most of my um, high school and college years traveling with all sorts of people that, you know, were just interested in healthy living. So I still meet people um, or get emails from people that went on a McDougal adventure, you know, back in early 2000. And it's just so, so neat. I'd love to start doing that again. We did, um, we did a trip to Glacier Bay, Alaska in, gosh, 2016, I believe. Um, so we were kind of, you know, starting to do the trips again, but then, you know, life happened and then COVID and, but I would love to start traveling again. And I, I think we have so many McDougal followers that keep emailing me like, when are you going to do trips again? Um, so. Wow. That was it's yeah. great that it might be something on the horizon. I love it. There's so many places I want to go and, you know, being able to do it with like-minded people and have great food is, is just so much fun. Yeah. People are asking you're hosting. Does that mean mom and dad are coming down too? Oh, yes, absolutely. My oldest uh, goes to school up in Oregon, which is where my parents are. And so they're gonna, going to drive down. And um, and then my brother will be here with his family and my mother-in-law. So it's going to be fun. I'm excited. That is fantastic. How When are you going to start cooking for it? Like a couple of days? Oh, my maybe? goodness. Well, I'll, I'll, <clears throat> I would say it's going to take me days. You know, then, wow. you know, you've got to get first, you have to get the stuffing bread out. So the bread has to kind of sit out and get a little stale. So you have to do that a few days before getting the pies ready, you know. So I would say I'll probably start on Monday. Wow. That, because that, I like to prep. That. I like to be prepared. I don't want to be stressed out on Thanksgiving Day. So I would love to, to, to watch you prep. That would be so fun. I wish we lived close. Well, we live closer than we've ever lived, but still. I, know. So, I need to come visit you. I hope so. So here's a question from Patty. How do you handle guests coming to my house for holidays that are not whole food plant-based and want to bring their own animal products? Do I just say no? I have an answer, but I'm gonna let you go first. Well, you know, I, I don't just say no. I, I you know, I don't want to exclude people. 
Um, but they usually don't. I mean, I, I do such a big spread. I mean, my thing, when we have guests over, I like to do um, like Mexican. Uh, it's just such an easy thing to do with guests, even if they're not plant-based, because you've got the beans and the rice and all the veggies, and you can do guacamole and baked chips and all the different salsas. So um, yeah, I really haven't had that. But this is for the holidays. So I'm guessing it's yeah. like- I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell somebody they couldn't come or couldn't bring something. I just really? don't eat it. That's what so do you do, AJ? Well, okay. So we grew up kosher. And so there was a clear line of what was allowed in the house. So I, I mean, even though I'm not religious, I'm technically still kosher. So I don't, I'm not going to let anything in my house that I wouldn't let in my mouth. So I would say no, you know, very respectfully, you know, i no, I wouldn't let somebody smoke in my house. So, so yeah, I, I mean, if, if somebody can't go one meal without animal products, I mean, my goodness. So, but, but of course this is her house and her holiday. She gets to choose what she wants, but I, I just get so creeped out by animal products. I, I just don't want to be around them. Well, lucky for me, it's the whole McDougal family. So that question's not going to come up. <laughs> That's funny. Have you, uh, are any of your friends, do any of your friends eat like you? Because you, you said you kind of like permanently made the switch in college. So not as, no, not really. I mean, I have lots of friends that are interested in, in healthy eating, but, you know, healthy eating and plant-based eating is, is very different. Um, I'm, I'm more like Doug Lyle and yes. I, um, I don't push this diet on anyone. If people ask questions, I'll answer. But, you know, I'm very vague when people ask me what I do. Sometimes I tell them I'm in public health or I run the family business. And then if more questions come, then we can get into it. But I just, um, I'm not like my dad. He's in your face and he wants to change the world. And I, I want to change the world too, but with people that want to be changed, you know, that are interested and have questions. And that's how I, you know, start the conversation. But it's like you got a little bit from both parents. Yeah, totally. I did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. So they're asking, are you making the entire spread or are other people bringing contributions? So my sister in law is bringing pies, but everyone else is traveling in. So I've got it. I'm so excited to do this all myself that I'm. I'm doing it all except the pies. I've got some help with pies. Good. And Marianne's saying, um, where can she find the stuffing and chocolate pie recipe? I'm pretty sure that's on drmcdougall.com. There's a whole list of Thanksgiving recipes there. It is. There's a whole holiday meal planner. If you type that in the search engine, it'll come up. And my mom has done it. The whole thing with shopping lists and everything. And so the stuffing's in there. The wicked chocolate pie is in there um you know the, everything so yeah, really laid it out for, so I'll be printing that out and that'll be my shopping list and but it really makes it easy that's fantastic and tomorrow my guest is Dr. Nikki Davis and she's doing a Thanksgiving cooking demo using Mary's recipes oh fun I'll have to watch yeah, I know isn't that cool so you live in Santa Rosa and do they still have the McDougal meals at various restaurants like they used to they sure do. I'm so lucky. There's a few Mexican restaurants in town that have a McDougal menu. And it's, I mean, I can just order number five, but I don't even have to do anything. You know, I don't have to say anything. So I love that. We're pretty spoiled. And so it's like, it's a Spanish rice with no oil. It's a whole pinto beans. And then they do lettuce and tomatoes, corn tortillas. Sometimes I'll get the guacamole. Um, there's a couple different restaurants that will do sauteed veggies without oil. So peppers and onions, uh, which is just great. I'm, I'm very lucky. With the McDougal program not happening in person at the Flamingo anymore, how do people know what restaurants are McDougal friendly and to even ask for the McDougal menu? So you mean if they're in Santa Rosa? If they're in Santa Rosa, for example. Well, a lot of the menus are, I mean, it's actually on the wall or in their menu. It'll say McDougal menu. That is so great. cool. I, I love that. I, I know. know. Um, you know, other people, we have a list that we can email. Uh, we email people and let them know. And we're always adding to it for new restaurants that we find. But, uh, you know, there might be some in your area that um, you, you don't even know that they're they're McDougal friendly. Like we love to go to Japanese restaurants 
or Thai food or Mexican. Those tend to be really easy places to eat out no matter where you are. Yeah, absolutely. Cindy's saying every restaurant needs a McDougal menu. I couldn't agree more. Wouldn't that be great? I love that. I remember when I used to go to True North at Christmas to work, I, it, a lot of times Larry and Ann Wheat would drive down to visit me and they would take me to like Gary Chew's and then we would order from the McDougal menu. And it, it was just so fun to be able to do that. It's really nice just to not have to think and just to sit and order. But I have found that if you put in a little bit of effort, no matter where you are, you can you know sort of train the restaurants in your area to cook the food that you want. The hardest thing is getting it without oil. Yes. Pretty easy to do the dairy and the meat. It's just the oil and the hidden oils. But if it's a restaurant that you like, you want to go to, then, you know, put in the effort. And I, I think you'll be really surprised what you can get. You know, you know, I know you guys are loving doing the online program now and your dad says he'll never go back. But I'm, you know, when you did it at the Flamingo, the food was extraordinary. Did you help train the chefs there? Oh, we did. It took us years. And every time they had a new chef, we'd have to, you know, retrain them. But, you know, they had my mom's recipes and they were really receptive. And so they got great at it. We didn't have to worry about oil or, you know, once in a while there'd be too much salt or, you know, something would get messed up. But, you know, we just go back to the kitchen and have a little conversation. Sometimes it would be because they started using a new bean that was really high in sodium or a new tomato product that was really high in sodium. You know, those things just weren't on their radar. Um, but yeah, they did a great job. However, we have found with our online courses that people do even better because they're cooking themselves. You know, this way they're cooking their food, you know, the things that they're familiar with in their own kitchen, learning alongside the McDougal team so they can ask questions and get inspiration and, you know, we found at our in-person program on day, you know, eight, it was a 10-day program, on day eight, people were kind of experiencing a little bit of dread and apprehension about going home because they now had to clean out their pantry and go grocery shopping and do meal planning and, you know, figure out what they were going to do. And, you know, this way, they're really kind of doing it as, as they're learning. So, that's and, one of the reasons we're not going back. <laughs> right. I mean, because also they, you can you have a much wider reach because not that you didn't get people from other countries, but it's got to be so much easier for people that do live outside the United States to not to have to make that trip, whether it's COVID or not. Yes, we have people from all over the world and we did before. But yeah, there's, you know, days of travel that you don't have to do thousands of dollars sometimes in travel expenses. Um, so we find that even when they're in a different time zone, they can work it out. We record all live lectures and make all appointments based on your time zone. So, you know, we have people from Thailand and um, I mean, all over and it works out just fine. And they don't have to pay for the hotel either. Exactly. Or the food or anything. Yeah, it's so, I mean, it's really, it's never been more affordable for people that haven't done it. I, I'm very honored I get to teach cooking for the program. And for people that haven't done it, that are, especially if they're struggling with their weight or a lifestyle disease. It's, it's just, I mean, Linda Middlesworth who she took it. I mean, and she's like, to me, she's already successful. And she's like, I, you know, she was slipping up a little bit and eating a little bit too many cookies. And she said it was fantastic. Yeah, she was great. Yeah. She just had to make a few little tweaks and then, you know, she's doing really well, yeah. but it's, go ahead. How, how often do you do it? Is it approximately every month or maybe eight or 10 times a year? Cause your next one I know is until January, I believe. We do them six times a year. So our next one's January 13th. We thought we'd take the holidays off and just fill that with our half day events. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and well, by then people, I bet you that January one is gonna sell out really quickly because by then people will be ready. They'll have made some slips and slides, had a few snack accidents, and they're like, I gotta do this. All those new year's resolutions. <laughs> oh my God. What, what, what do you find is the, I don't know if the word is resistance or challenge when people come to the program, what's like, what's the biggest hurdle or obstacle, or at least in their mind, when they first start? That starches make you fat. <laughs> How can you be eating all these potatoes and all this rice? There's no way. It's like, yes. Yeah. 
-hmm. they don't trust that. Yeah, that's so funny. Well, because for some, it's decades of being taught that these foods are evil and you shouldn't eat them. And so it's just, you know, changing that mindset and educating and informing how wonderful and satiating starches are. They're the best. We love them. All starches. Yeah, so I think that's just getting over the fear, the fear of starches, the um, fear of eating until you're comfortably full when you're hungry, you know, for lots of life long dieters, you know, it's all about portion control and calorie counting. And that's not what we're about at all. So that's a, you know, a big uh, switch as well. Yep. Well, Panina says, I love the program so much. It's better than I can say. Thanks, Panina. I remember Panina well. Yeah. That I is so it. cool. What's your favorite starch? Rice. Oh, interesting. I didn't expect that. Uh, um, but it's, but you're a McDougal. It has to be. I know, right? <laughs> well, I grew up in Hawaii and, you know, I think a lot of Asian food, uh, but the funny thing is my favorite food is Mexican. So beans and rice. I mean, I could eat beans and rice three times a day, seven days a week. <laughs> I love it. Just, just after I answered that question in the chat, Cindy said, Heather, what is your favorite starch and how do you cook it? Oh, too funny. Yeah. Beans and rice. That's my go-to. That's another one pot meal that I do all the time. And I always have, like, I always have rice either that I cooked in my instant pot or frozen rice. I always have beans, like a big pot of beans, black beans or pinto beans or canned beans. And I usually have like a fresh salsa that I made like a um, pico de gallo or something. So that way I can just pull those things out of my fridge or freezer and make a really fast burrito bowl. I'm all about keeping it simple, yeah. getting food in my belly fast and easy. Oh, somebody named Chloe McDougal is watching. Oh, I love it. I, I don't mean. But I think it's actually Mary because because the, the, the comment is so proud to watch my daughter doing such a fantastic job. Talking yeah, yeah, about okay. yeah is, Chloe's my niece. <laughs> <laughs> that is incredible. Your kids that you, you, I'm guessing you had plant-based pregnancies as well. So they, this is how they were raised. And yep. I'm guessing they're like, they, they've grown to optimal heights and they're healthy. They're yes, they're thriving. My oldest son is six, one, my other two are still growing and they're, oh my gosh, I don't know, five, 11. They're, they're all big. They're bigger than me. Um, they know that starches are their food. That's what fuels them. They're all very athletic, very fit. Um, are they perfect? Absolutely not. Do I expect them to be? Absolutely not. What's important is that this, they know that this is, this is their food. This is what they eat the majority of the time. And this is what they take with them into adulthood. Cause that's what I want for them is lifelong good health, not just well, mom's in charge, you know? <laughs> wow. So we just talked about this. What was the number one resistance or hurdle for the people in the program? And Joyce writes, I love potatoes. Do the potatoes break down into sugars that may be difficult for pre-diabetics and diabetics? And your dad talks a lot about diabetes in some of the lectures in the program. It's not the sugar, it's the fat. So get the fat out of your diet. Um, so, you know, starches are great. We reverse diabetes all the time in patients by teaching them a starch-based diet full of potatoes and rice and corn and beans. That's what you need to eat. It's, it's the fat that's paralyzing the insulin, not the sugar. Yeah. If only the other doctors in the world would get the memo. So question from Chris, since your favorite starch is rice, I wonder if you're eating brown, white, basmati, a combo. So a combo. I, I'm like you, AJ. I like white better. I know. I do. That's what I'm having for. I can't, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed of it. It's delicious. See, I'm eating it with all the other good things. So I'm not getting all the fiber that brown rice has. You know, I, it's okay. Um, I can live with it. Um, but I do, I do all kinds of rice. I mean, I do love brown rice. If I do enchiladas, I'll do brown rice, but I love jasmine, basmati, short grain. I love all rice. 
is uh, my phone is my phone is playing your father right now isn't that oh, weird it just literally started i thought i heard my dad <laughs> It's a, it's the diabetes uh diabetes blood re sugar yeah. revolution i was listening before and like all of a sudden he's there playing it that is so, so aj i'm gonna add the pasta right now because the soup's been simmering so i just have a, a cup of uh gluten-free brown rice pasta a little elbow macaroni i've always got these in my pantry and um i'm just gonna stir that it smells so good I'm excited for lunch. Nice. Cindy says, how do you eat Thai food? It has all that coconut milk and a high fat content. Do you sub a nut milk and said, your mom had a great suggestion for how to do that, how to make coconut milk without the fat. Yes. So that's one of the things that we tell you to stay away from in Thai restaurants. And it's usually just in the curries. So I order uh, a red curry without the coconut milk and just get it with a vegetable broth. Um, but that you do want to be careful of the coconut milk because of all the saturated fat. However, AJ is right. If you're making it at home, there's a trick and you can take like an unsweetened almond milk and add a few drops of coconut extract and pff, you've got coconut milk without the saturated fat. So that's something I would suggest if you're making curries at home. But if you're out, you know, there's all kinds of, you could get pad thai, all sorts of different stir fries. You could get the fresh veggie rolls. Um, you know, there might be some soups that are made just with vegetable broth, no coconut milk. Yep. You know, I, I've never met your husband. I don't even know his name or what he looks like, but I'm curious, is he plant-based and was he plant-based when you met him or did you have to change him? He was not plant-based when I met him. He was very meat and potatoes. And I just sort of, I just started cooking for him. You know, I didn't cram it down his throat. I just took him to a few lectures that my dad was giving and just started making the food. And he realized how good it was and how great he felt. And, you know, he didn't have to worry about his weight. So, you know, it just seemed like it just made sense. But I, I mean, there's no way I would be able to have, you know, a, a meat eater as a, as a partner. That would be weird. Um, so he really <laughs> didn't have any choice. But <laughs> That's great. That's great. So Joyce, who asked about the sugar in the potato says, is there any inflammatory nature to rice like other grains like wheat? Are there grains that are not inflammatory? I don't consider grains inflammatory. I or any starches. It's animal products and processed foods that are inflammatory. Exactly. We don't believe that grains are inflammatory. It's the animal products that cause all the inflammation and irritation and disease. So um you know, there's a lot of misconceptions out there and, and ideas that we just don't don't subscribe to. Someone sent me an article this morning about how fattening potatoes were. And I'm like, well, maybe Ugh. if you eat them as French fries, you know, but there's no way potatoes are fattening, you know, if you don't make them with oil or sour cream or uh, cheese. So don't you ever get tired of just saying it over and over? <laughs> you know, I don't because I, I get it. I get there's so much noise out there. There's so much information. It's so confusing. And, you know, I've got my dad, my mom, the whole McDougal team, Jeff, Novick, Doug Lyle, um, Dr. Lim that I can ask questions of. And not everybody has that. So I'm okay answering those questions over and over again. It's what I do. I know that you'll probably never do the 12 day or any program medical-based programs in person again, but did you ever thought of maybe doing the advanced study weekends again? Because those were just the best. We've talked about it. Absolutely. I mean, nothing's not on the horizon. I, I, you know, I never say never, because as soon as I say that, it, something happens, but um, I would be open to that. You know, it, it, we, we miss connecting with our McDougal community. You know, it's great seeing everybody online, but you know, there is something about actually shaking hands and giving people a hug that we do miss. Yeah. Do you have any memories of past advanced study weekends that stick out in your mind? Like the, like maybe the, 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 the funnest one, the best one, like, what do you remember from them? Oh my gosh, so many. I mean, we've had so many guests over the years. I think the ones where we had like Neil Barnard and Michael Greger and T. Colin Campbell and Dr. Esselstyn, you know, like the hall, the the, the big guys, you know, the old guard. Yeah. I, those were great. You know, just seeing people that 
um, you know, I've, I've read about and, you know, people have looked up to for, for decades. Those are probably the most memorable, but I mean, there have been some, some guests that, that I just, I mean, gosh, H. Gilbert Welch. Um, I mean, there's just so many speakers. I, so I think, you know, my dad and I talk about that because there are a lot of people we'd like to, to bring back, but there might be an online version as well. Who knows? Nice. What about the, uh, remember the Celebrity Chef Weekend? That was the first opportunity I had. That was so much fun. I know it was a lot of work for you guys. We did that one time. <laughs> and it just because it was so much work, it was so much fun. But, you know, getting all the chefs, you know, prepped and on stage and then, you know, cleaned up and the next chef on was was a lot of work. But, oh, that was so much fun. It really Kevin Dunn. I mean, we, oh, we had some great chefs. Good memories. I, I just, I love that. I love thinking back about the McDougal events and the people that I've met and, you know, developed connections with over the years. It's just been priceless. Yeah. What a, what a, what a what great life you have had and have, and have. I'm very lucky. Yep. Chris says, anybody know of a base, great basic salsa recipe? I'm about to quit buying organic salsa and make my own since it's probably simple. So my favorite that I do all the time is just a pico de gallo, which is tomatoes, white onion, jalapeno, cilantro, lime juice. That's it. And I just chop that all up really fine. And I make a whole big bowl of it. And it'll stay in the fridge for, you know, probably five days. And we put it on potatoes. We put it on soup. We put it in burritos. Um, it's just great. Um, so that would probably be my favorite. Um, but yeah, a lot of the salsas have a lot of sodium in them and they're just expensive. So I find I making, making my own is really easy. And then if you want, if you don't want such a, such a chunky salsa, I would just take all of that and put it in a food processor or a blender and just blend it up. And then you have a much smoother salsa. Salsa is my guilty pleasure. And that's the one thing that really where I get the sodium in my diet because it's, it's like they're so good. You know, like the, the ones that I can't make, like the pasilla and the tomate, not that I can't, that I don't. So I love to buy them. And I just, I love salsa. Probably my favorite mm -hmm. condiment. Okay. Um, Joyce is saying, what, uh, what about gluten? What about gluten? <laughs> Can you be more specific? Um, well, I love gluten. I love pasta. I love bread. Um, there's, you know, a small portion of the population that is, that has celiac disease and they cannot tolerate gluten. And it's actually you know, quite dangerous for them to have it. Some people are bothered by gluten, but for the most part, we're very gluten friendly. Um, you know, and even pasta, people are scared about pa of pasta. It's, um, not a very calorie dense food because it soaks up so much of the water. So, um, yeah, we, we like gluten. Absolutely. Vi says, I have a crock pot cooking of Mary McDougall's recipe, Elaine's spicy lentils from her cookbook. It's still one of my all-time favorite recipes. I love that. I remember that recipe. Elaine's what is your favorite recipe of your mother? Oh my goodness. The Brazilian black beans. I love, um, her split pea soup. Um, oh, Heather's Mushroom Delight, which is this recipe that she made when I was a little girl. Oh, I mean, there's so many. I mean, she, my mom has done over 4,000 recipes. I can't I, even. I can't imagine. I've only done like 400. How the heck? I mean, I can't even, I can't even comprehend that many. I know. It's crazy. Oh, this smells so good. Just curious, you have a great figure. Do you exercise? I uh, do, I walk often. Um, I do yoga when I think about it, but uh, exercise is the thing that I make excuses not to do the most. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I'm not perfect. However, um, Jack Dixon, who is our uh, personal trainer on the McDougal team and lectures during our 12 day course, has inspired me to just incorporate fitness into my life. And so I find myself doing that more and more, you know, not actually going to an exercise class or going to the gym, 
you know, just doing planks or squats or push-ups or, you know, those types of things. So it's important. I find, you know, as you get older, it's important, you know, use it or lose it. Yeah, absolutely. Mona saying, I love the McDougal app for recipes. Thank you. I do too. I love it. I usually have it on my counter and I've got my favorites selected. It makes shopping lists. It's got a lot of great photos. But for the most part, I'm not a big recipe follower. You know, I've got my meals that I make over and over again that are in my head. And, and that's what I do. Right. But somebody's asking, what kind of pasta do you like? So um, the Tink Yada that I showed you is a great brand if you're worried about um, gluten. But um, otherwise, gosh. I don't know the brand that I that I use the most. Um, I don't know. I'm drawing a blank. But any whole grain pasta. I mean, I like them in penne, spaghetti. Um, we do pasta with marinara sauce quite a bit. I just make my own because it's hard to find a fat-free pasta sauce. But really easy to make make your own. Just taking tomatoes. Um, and canned or boxed tomatoes and adding um, onion, garlic, basil, oregano, and just making a really simple marinara sauce. And then we'll do like broccolini or broccoli, peas, kale, spinach, different veggies with our pasta. And I love that. There's a question from Anthony. How often do you eat beans? Oh, every day. Definitely. I love them. Um, I, our, our general rule is a cup a day, but I, I don't really measure. I mean, there's some days that I have less, there's some days I have more, but for the most part, um, I'll have about a cup a day. So now I'm gonna put in some kale that I chopped up. And this is just one whole bunch of kale, but you could use spinach or chard or, And that's it. It's really pretty too. I'll show you in a second. When you freeze your soups, how do you do? You freeze them in in bags and those super cubes. How do you do your freezing? So I use mason jars, which are glass. So I always leave like an inch of room at the top. Or I have Pyrex containers that are also glass. That, um, the bottom's glass. The top has a little silicone top with a glass insert, um, or I'll use Ziploc bags if I don't have a lot of space and they freeze really well flat, um, or Ziploc plastic containers, you know, it really doesn't matter. I like glass, but, um, you know, depending on how much space I have or what I have, I'll use plastic. Yep. Cindy says, do you grow any of your own fruits and vegetables? I don't. I used to. Um, I have plans to start a garden next summer, but I haven't yet. I have, luckily I have neighbors, lots of neighbors that have beautiful gardens. And so they bring me their basil, their tomatoes, their I got butternut squash that my neighbor just brought me. Um, you know, there's, there's all kinds of veggies that I'm always getting shared by my neighbors. Oh, that's great. So every guest on this show gets asked what they eat in a day. And I'm curious, do you eat the standard McDougal breakfast, which is oatmeal and fruit, or do you do something different? I do. I, I love oatmeal. It's just so easy. I love it with bananas and brown sugar and blueberries, uh, a little unsweetened almond milk. I love it because it's filling. It's easy. Sometimes I'll do hash browns. Um, sometimes I'll even do soup. Um, and then for lunch, I do like, I'll do, I'll do leftover soup. I'll do, um, can you see this? See? That really cooked down. Yeah. So um, this will be lunch. So let's see. So this will be my lunch today. And I'll have it. Oh, I want to show you the breads. So I'll just have a big bowl of soup. Um, and then I've got, so we're pretty spoiled in Santa Rosa. We have this bakery called Village Bakery, and they make this seeded sourdough bread that really has nothing in it. 
and it's delicious. I like to serve it warm, either toasted or in the oven and serve it with um, a bowl of soup, which is great. There's another brand that my mom always talks about that's um, Essential Baking Company. I don't know if you've seen this. Um, really simple. It's white flour, but there's nothing in it. And these keep for forever. You can put them in your freezer and then just pop them out and have fresh bread. Um, but another thing, like I said, with this soup, I would just do um, roasted baby gold potatoes. I love those. I do those in my air fryer all the time. I just throw them in and AJ, what I learned from you, 420 minutes, they cook up just perfectly. And then I can have those with this soup. Um, and then for dinner, I'll do like burrito bowls. We do bowls a lot. We'll do burrito bowls, pasta bowls, Asian noodle bowls, Mediterranean bowls. Um, I like doing enchilada casseroles uh, a lot, lasagna, um, split pea soup is a favorite. You know, a lot of these are just one, one pot um, that make large quantities that work really well for leftovers and usually freezing just because, you know, that's how I like to cook. I don't like to spend hours in the kitchen. I've got a life. I've, you know, I've got a family, I've got a business to run. So um, I really want to have, you know, fresh, healthy food for my family, but I don't want to spend hours doing it. So um, as easy as I can make it, uh, that's what I do. But I, but for me, you know, being successful is planning my meals, batch cooking, and keeping my pantry stocked. So That's I always have things different. in my pantry to make like split pea soup or bean burritos or pasta with marinara sauce, because I know that life, you know, gets in the way and you can have all these plans for dinner and, you know, you come home late and there's nothing nothing planned, nothing ready. You can pull these items out from your pantry, fridge or freezer and have a healthy meal on the table and in not too much time. Yeah. I think whether it's weight loss or maintaining weight loss, or even just being healthy, that really is the secret having healthy food ready. And to do that, somebody's got to cook it like, and batch cooking is the easiest way I think to get food on the table every night. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have any uh, non-compliant food in your house? I remember your parents once told a story that they used to have birds. And when they had birds, they had a lot of nuts and that they both were a little bit heavier because they were eating the birds nuts. Do you have any things like that maybe you keep for your kids that are, that are a little bit richer that you find yourself dipping into now and then? Well, I wouldn't think nuts were non-compliant, just high fat. So I definitely have nuts in my house. Um, I'll use those in cooking. You, I mean, I do have three growing boys, so they can have more fat and calories and should than us adults should. Um, my non-compliant food is probably chocolate, dark chocolate. I That's my weakness. Add some salted roasted nuts in there and oh, I'm a goner. So I don't, I don't usually have those in the house, but um, yeah, dark chocolate. That's my vice. <laughs> wow. Well, good to know if I'm ever sending you a present. That's, no, I didn't mean like that nuts were not compliant, but I meant like just, I don't know, some guilty pleasure that, yeah. uh, that would, that would be too tempting for you. So Stephanie's saying, what's the secret to cooking pasta and not getting the water to boil over? Don't cook it so high. You know, just cook it on a uh, medium, medium heat and just pay attention, stir it, maybe use a bigger pot. Maybe the pot you're using is too small, but that usually happens to me if I'm not paying attention, I've got my heat up too high and yeah. Wow. Uh, Joyce says, how much raw food do you eat in your diet? Not a lot. Um, I'm not a big salad person. Uh, so I think the raw food that I eat is mostly fruit. So bananas, berries, um, yeah, I like kale salads, but most of my food is cooked. Yeah. Uh, do you ever think you'll write a book or a cookbook or just a book about your life or anything like that? So I um, talk a lot about writing a cookbook just because with my mom, because there's so many recipes that have you know, been developed over the, the last few years and things that have changed that, you know, we talk a lot about. Yeah. <laughs> I have an idea. I have an idea. That's a great idea. Why doesn't, why don't you just make like a McDougal cookbook, but either have it for every McDougal or just all the McDougal women, like even your nieces and your, you know what I mean? Like 
like oh yeah yeah because all of them have wonderful recipes right like so just have it like like just as long as your last name is mcdougall you can put a recipe in the book that's a great idea yeah because that would take a little pressure off just you guys having to do it. i think that's a fabulous idea okay so one more question just for fun is there anything you know not i don't want you to have to tell tall tales out of school but maybe either a funny story about growing up mcdougall or your mom or dad you know not embarrassing but maybe something that we don't know that you could share like i don't know like your, i don't know maybe you're other than me standing at the bus stop eating four McDonald's cheeseburgers before I went home. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's no. hilarious. No, I mean, I was a kid that no one would trade lunches with, you know? I mean, back then I was weird because there weren't plant-based kids back then. You know, nowadays there's kids that have gluten allergies or this or that, or, you know, people have different meals. And back then I was kind of kind of the odd duck. Yeah. yeah. I, I love your parents, but I find your father very intimidating. Is, is do you are you afraid of him too? <laughs> or is he just your dad? He's my dad. And we've just developed such a great working relationship over the years that I mean, yeah, sure he can be scary and intimidating, but you know, I'm half him. So yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is that is great. Well, I, I just I love your family so much. I so appreciate the work you do and uh and keep doing it. And the program is fantastic, guys. If you know, you might not be struggling now, but wait until all the holidays hit, you're going to want to be in that program in January. And it's going to sell out really fast because of just the timing. That's when everybody is there, you know, they're waiting for January, right? Because yeah, we have, we have this, you know, this space of two and a half months where we don't have anything going on. So right. we're excited. you can interact with the McDougals as early as this Saturday for their wonderful Truth About Food program. I put the link in the chat and the show notes. You can still get it at a discounted rate. It starts Saturday or every Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on YouTube, but on the Dr. McDougal channel where they answer your questions and you can have fun with Dr. McDougal, Mary and Heather. Thanks, AJ. That was great. Of course. Well, this was a lot of fun, Heather. You got got to come back more often. Don't don't wait, uh, you know, like many years. And 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 thank you so much for the delicious recipe. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my guest is Dr. Nikki Davis, who is doing a Thanksgiving cooking demo of all of not all, but many of Mary McDougal.